Hey guys, Ron here. Wow, it's very quiet. Beverly Hills Day, quiet Beverly Hills neighborhood. And there's a dog across the street and there's a dog next door going crazy. Just as we're coming by. House behind me, this house belonged to George Burns. And we're gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about George Burns. True name, or real name, Nathaniel Birnbaum. Oh, it's a pretty house. It's a lot of cars in the driveway too. And somebody's barbecuing or having a pool party or both. Maybe it's them. So I'm obviously going to pass the house again. But we'll talk about Natty as he was known as a kid. Or Nathaniel. Actually he was known as Natty. Then Nate. George Burns. And then we'll come back to the house. That's a pretty one, isn't it? That's a beautiful home. Get me out of the picture. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get going here. I got the little guy, my little guy with me too. And he demands what he demands. And it doesn't matter what I'm doing. So let's talk a little bit about George Burns. So like I said, he was born Nathaniel Birnbaum. Uh in what is now Poland. It was called Galaxia then. Oh, I'll be right back to Sorry, I know this is TMI, but I had to take care of my dog real quick. And you know, I'm a responsible dog walker. So, and it's Beverly Hills too. So, and even if it wasn't, I'm a responsible dog owner and walker. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about George Burns and we'll go back to the house. Come on, don't do that. So, born Nathaniel Burba, Bur born Nathaniel Birnbaum in what is now Poland. They immigrated to the United States uh, and George's father, well, I'll call him George, but you know, like I said, growing up he was known as Natty and then Nate and, and those were kind of popular Jewish names during the Depression and afterwards anyway, in America that is, once they Americanized their names. Um, so uh, George's father Got the flu, I think it was before the Spanish flu, because it was like 1903, and died young at the age of 47. And then young George kind of felt more of a responsibility to help provide for the family. He actually was singing in a, in a quartet of boys, I believe they were called like the Pee Wee Quartet, come on, when he was uh, like six years old. So he already was performing. And it went from there. He almost always, as he grew older, had a woman partner. He was doing vaudeville and skits and plays and then uh, radio and radio is really where he made his mark he he married his first dance partner although it was like a six-week wedding the only reason he got married was uh because i'm just checking my timer here the only reason he got married is because come on is because her parents made them get married before they went out on tour and then it was annulled i think after they came back and then he was, uh, after he met Gracie Allen, he was with her for 38 years, and she worked with him too, obviously, as we know. And, you know, in the beginning, Gracie was sort of the, um, she was the straight man, or the straight woman, I guess, and he was the comedy. And then they switched it around and found that it worked much better. Uh, and they were in radio, and worked a lot in radio, got to know Jack Benny very, very well. Went by the name, changed his name professionally to George Burns. Had they switched to television, a very successful for eight years. They did the Burns and Allen, or George Burns, Gracie Allen show. Um, but then by uh, the mid 60s, Gracie was already sick. And she really didn't have the strength. Her heart really didn't have it in her, literally her heart, to keep performing. But she said, you know, she owed it to George. She had to keep going. So kept performing probably past what she really should have but she did for George's sake and probably because she loved it and probably the money was great for both of them anyway um, after Gracie died which was very tragic I mean if you ever see the newsreel footage of the funeral George really breaks down and it's only one of the few times you see him show emotion in public um, I want to just get the house again and we're gonna get the house again as we come up to it anyway um, after Gracie died, George continued with the George Burns show, but things 
didn't work out as well for him for quite a while. He did other TV shows. He'd go to show with Connie Stevens playing a kind of scattered, ditzy, uh, Gracie-type character. But it never really cemented itself until... I'll show you the house again, too, as we're walking by it. 1975, you know, his very good friend Jack Benny was supposed to do a film called The Sunshine Boys, which was the film adaptation of the Neil Simon play. And J Jack Benny was very, very ill, and then he died before filming could commence. And um, George Burns took it very, very hard. In fact, he only he said that he only really cried after Gracie died and after Jack, uh, after, uh, Jack Benny died. They were very, very close. And he said, I can't imagine my career or even my life without, you know, Jack Benny in it. And they were very close. They, people even say that he was never really 100%. As we all know, you experience a loss in your life of a loved one. It takes a piece of you away. I know. A lot of you know. And you're never fully the same. And they say that after the loss of Jack Benny, he really never was the same. I'm sure... Also, 10 years earlier or so with Gracie. So, um, George went on to actually replace his great, late, dear friend Jack Benny, and he starred in The Sunshine Boys himself. And there's the house again, by the way. Beautiful home here on Maple Drive in Beverly Hills. And uh, actually, my <laughs> about a mile away, this is North Maple, South Maple, across Wilshire Boulevard, my very first girlfriend was an au pair, meaning basically a nanny. She was straight off the, she had just come, <laughs> she had just come from Germany. She was actually did not have her citizenship. She was what we now call illegal or an undoc, she was an undocumented immigrant from Germany as an au pair and a nanny, uh, but very sweet girl. And she worked for a nice family over on, um, uh, on Maple Drive on this very street, but further down in the flats of Beverly, it was about a mile away and took care of their baby. And then a second baby came and we used to go over to Roxbury Park and sometimes uh, sometimes uh, another park, uh, uh, Holby Park. Little did I know, you know, when I was 19, 20 years old, that all the movie stars were there and with the history like I do now. We were just kids. Anyway, that's just a side note. Uh, but anyway, um, so Jack Benny unfortunately passed away before getting to film Sunshine Boys. George had a big career revival at age 79 with Sunshine Boys. He went on to, oh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe he was nominated for the Oscar. Uh, no, too bright. Can't go without my two pair of sunglasses here. Ah, I've explained why I need two pair. One's fading. Look how faded that is. And I haven't got a chance to go get it done. And it's prescription. Anyway, so George Burns had a real career revival at age 79 with Sunshine Boys. And then... Uh, two years later, he was in the film that I think is where I, as a very, very young guy, in 1977, as a very young boy, went to, or someone brought me to the movies and saw the movie Oh God. I already really liked John Denver, his music and his acting, and that really introduced me to George Burns. I think it was a perfect role. You know, what I thought about Burns was he was just playing himself, basically. You know, he even had to have his, it must have been written in the contract that he had a cigar in the picture, you know, God always smoking a cigar. However, I remember even as a young boy watching the film, Oh God, that in the poignant dialogue, in the lines when he was supposed to be very, you know, compassionate to, I guess compassionate's the word, to John Denver's character, really meaningful stuff, that Burns could be quite moving, very serious-minded, and it was, um, it affected me emotionally. I mean, it was, it was sweet. I guess that's the best word. And a good actor, and I think it was coming from the heart, too. Just talking about whatever he was talking about, whatever the dialogue said. Written by Larry Gilbart, actually, who was one of the co-first writers of MASH. Anyway, um, and creator of MASH, too, I believe, the TV show. I'll show you some of these other beautiful homes here. So, um, after that, Burns worked pretty steadily, even in film. Uh, and then he was in his 80s, and then he was in his, in his 90s, and was actually working. In fact, he's got, uh, and I know this because I, an ex of mine used to work over a lot at Cedar sinai Hospital here in Beverly Hills. There's a, first it was George, they changed the street name to George Burns Avenue, and then 
the city allotted the, the, the cross street was Gracie Allen. So it's Burns and Allen. It's the corner of Burns and Allen, and it's right in the near the parking structure, Thalian's building, and the main uh, area of Cedar Sinai Hospital. So George was there, and he said, you know, hey, it's a great. I think he said he quipped, hey, it's great to be. Uh, at you know the corner of George Burns and Gracie Allen Drive, and at my age, it's great to be anywhere. And I thought <laughs> that's pure George Burns. Mm -hmm. Camera on this house. Camera outside the gate. Anyway, so Nathan Burnbound, George Burns, he made it until the very end. I mean, he was literally working until I believe the last six weeks of his life. Although years earlier, in or several years earlier in his 90s, he had a fall in a bathtub. And I believe he had some brain swelling. He was never really the same again. Didn't really work as much again. But gosh, I mean, the guy was working until 99, in some capacity, until 99 years of age. And he said that's what he wanted to do. You know, it was all about working. He couldn't, he couldn't, you know, uh, relish the idea of retiring. So he wanted to work, and we can understand that. And he died here at the home. And he was, it was about a month and a half after his 100th birthday like Kirk Douglas. So God bless him, he made it to 100. Even though he smoked a million cigars, uh, he also swam and he did push-ups and sit-ups and he exercised regularly. Look at this beautiful, this looks like old Hollywood, this house, huh? All right, folks, well, I guess I'll cut it there. We're almost at, almost at the Beverly Hills uh, City Hall. So I'll cut it there and uh, Say thank you again, of course, for watching and for listening. My name is Ron. If you like the channel, well, I'm having all kinds of problems filming today, aren't I? All right, we're going to stop here for a second. If you like the channel, guys, please subscribe. If you do subscribe, please, uh, oh, that's not a bad show. If you do subscribe, uh, please give the uh, hit the little bell icon next to the subscription button. You'll be notified as to when I post. And folks, please give the channel likes. You know that's the only thing that moves the channel along. I'd really appreciate it. And comment in the comment section if you see fit. If you feel like saying, hey, Ron, you don't know your facts. Well, I do research my character or my subjects. I know as much as I can. Sometimes I make a mistake. As you see, I don't carry notes anymore. So cut me some slack, Jack and Jane. Appreciate it. I'll see you at the next location. Let's look at this neighborhood and we'll say bye-bye.